So there. I'm oh, sorry about that. Okay. okay. We're we're reconvened, Councillor Lavers. Um, I would like to make a motion, please, Jen. And if you can kind of bring one that Mayor Michaels had up, I'm just going to steal the first part of that wording. And if it's not there, don't worry about it. Uh, so take rate of and then delete all the rest of that. Uh, and then I would like to say uh, $1,500 for all non residential. Short-term rentals and a rate of one thousand dollars for all residential short-term rentals. Just before you speak to it, Councillor Lavers, I might just suggest a wording change of. Uh, Non-principal residents and principal residents. Correct. Yes, please. Thank you. Do you want to speak to it? Uh, yeah. Um, I think this, uh, we've talked an awful lot about um, these families uh, running businesses in their homes. And uh, we just we just talked about some of the businesses that are some of the some of the costs that, that businesses do face, like the differential tax rate. Uh, commercial rate for trash collection, for water, for all the costs that businesses pay. There's a premium, and I think this more fully reflects um, these businesses being run on these on these residential locations. Thank you, thank you, Councillor. Thank you, Councillor Lebers. Committee, any comments or questions? I'm sorry, I see no handle. If I could, sir, I I would. Uh, Ask if Council Rivers would consider referencing. Oh, one way. Uh, but referencing rather than referencing the short term bylaw 1162, this would actually be governed by the business license bylaw, which is 1126. I would love if we change that word to reflect that. We can do the principal and non principal. Yeah, we'll just have yeah, non-residential should be non-principal. So non-principal residents. And then residential should be uh, principal residents. Everything's good, Councillor Lavere. Sure. Okay. All right. Committee comments, questions. Uh, go with uh, Councillor Magoon and Mayor Michaels. So I my question for administration uh, before I speak on this: um, If I'm running any other kind of business out of my household, what am I paying for uh, my my business license? If I could, sir, um, any other home-based business contemplated? Currently, by the uh, Town of Hinton Land Use Bylaw, and just I'll look to Ms. Walker to confirm. Uh, I believe it's $160. So, if I may speak to that, yeah, I, in this instance, I, I can't support it because, again, you know, the same logic that was applied earlier, you know, whether it's fair, it's not fair to, in my mind, you know, to the, to the other home based businesses out there. Um, I absolutely agree with uh, my fellow counselors who are. You know, pushing to put a little bit more uh, onus and financial reality towards, especially the the non principal residents. Um, that being said, I, I think there's got to be a middle ground here. And I, for myself, I just I think this is a little bit too far on the other side of things. So I uh, I can't support it. Thanks. Okay, 
Councillor Magoon or Michaels. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, yeah, I support this. My original intent was a higher amount. I like that this is being contemplated. Um, uh, to Councillor Magoon's point, I, I share the same sentiment. It's going to be challenging to get it perfect across the board. Perhaps we revisit the land use bylaw, we revisit other documents that pertain to fees. Uh, but while we're dealing with this and establishing this, I feel it's appropriate to add uh, the caveat that speaks to this, and then we revisit other issues that, that come up, um, because I do have concerns for um, uh, other fees. Uh, but this is, I think, a great first draft and a great first bylaw for our community. And this helps balance the playing field. Maybe not 1 million percent perfect, but uh, I like this as a start. Uh, and I'll be speaking in favor of this. Thank you, Mayor Michaels, and myself, and then Councillor Ragoon. So I'll be speaking in favor of this too. Um, I, I feel these fees are fair based on the type of uh, business that are, that's being proposed in short-term rentals. The, the significant difference that I see between short-term rental uh, providers and a traditional home-based business is the impact on municipal services. A traditional home-based business, uh, say a hairdresser or something, a client comes, they're there for an hour and then they're gone. With short-term rentals, clients come and then they're there, they're parked on the street, they're actually there, there for hours, overnight quite a bit during the day. So they're taking up parking in residential neighborhoods. They're uh, bathing and showering. So they're putting demands on uh, municipal water services supplies. The same with sewer. So uh, service, municipal services are impacted by short-term rentals, in my opinion, uh, to a greater extent than conventional home-based businesses are. Uh, that's, why I, that's why I'm supporting this. I feel that the impact on the town is greater for these types of businesses than it is for traditional home-based businesses. So I think these fees are fair and I'm supporting the uh, proposal. Thank you. So go to Councillor Magoon. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I guess really two things and then I, I'll sort of stop. I don't want to take up too much time. Uh, the first to speak to um, the Chair's comments is that I, you know, certainly with parking, I, I think you have a fair point. However, I think if you have a house that's built and people are living there and occupying it, it doesn't matter perceptually on my part, whether those people rent or whether they, you know, they live there full time, you're still going to have people who are using that space and showering and, you know, putting those same demands on the septic and water systems. Um, my concern is that when this bylaw comes back to us, uh, and we have members of the public who I think are, you know, very reasonably vested in saying, hey, look, you know, we have concerns with the fairness of this potential bylaw. You know, you're going to look at charging us, you know, a, a lot more for, you know, this business that I run out of my home. Um, you know, we don't think that's fair. I honestly, I don't think I can look at them and say, yeah, I, you know, no, you're, you're wrong. It is fair. I just, something about it doesn't feel feel right to me, it doesn't feel fair. So I just, again, I, I can't support this when it, it comes back. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So years ago, I think it was 2018, 2019, prior to that, all of our business monies, the business license monies went into our beautification fund. So all the flowers, all the pretty things we saw in hidden came from those business license fees, okay? And then all of a sudden that was stopped and it was not stopped by a motion of council and then just stopped putting license money into that account. What would it take to get that money back into the beautification account? If, if we were to charge our people, non-residents, 1500 bucks and principal, what was it, 12? Thousand. thousand and have that money go into our unification account so it is these people running the um this business they're responsible they're making it happen the beautification in our account so what would it take sir um sir through you to the members of the uh committee it would just take the direction of council and uh so 
again, I, I've spoken to the importance of having uh, policy direction on our reserves on any dedications like this, and that would be simply another one that I would add to that, that would identify where the funding's coming from and the purpose and the intent of the uh, funding. I will support this motion. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Race, committee. Seeing nothing further from the committee, if we could see the proposed motion, please. Councillor LaBerge has moved the bylaw number 1126 reflect, reflect a rate of $1,500 for all non principal residents short term rentals and a rate of $1,000 for principal residents short term rentals. Sorry, we'll just sorry, I just wanted to add that to your yeah, So, so bylaw number 1126 is the business license bylaw. Is that that's the correct reference? ICO network, yes. Okay, committee, any comments or questions before I call the question? Councilor Taylor, yeah, I, I actually favor the um, the fees that are the DR. And the argument that services in town are that services, if you have uh, one of these things that are higher than if you have a normal home, like they don't really see that as a significant argument. They don't see it as fair in comparison to what the people do that have a business where they do long term rentals in the house. The argument that you're trying to uh, make things fair between this type of business and a hotel, yeah, that's got some merit, but not enough to charge those fees in my mind. I see Councilman Goon's argument that this is a significant uh, change over what was presented in the public hearing and it's going to come back to us in a big way as a uh, key point. And I see that we're moving from a, an area where we have absolutely no regulation to an area where we have some regulation, you know, making some good progress. And then, you know, as things go to the future, we can refine that into the future, starting a, a modest approach and moving forward as being a more sensible way to go. What's the Taylor committee? Anything further? I think so. Nothing from committee. Right. Councillor Lavares has moved the bylaw number 1126 as this license bylaw. Reflect a rate of $1,500 for all non principal residents short term rentals and a rate of $1,000 for principal residents short term rentals. Committee, all those in favor? Opposed? And that's carried 4 3. Just a question, and I think the answer is yes. I just want to confirm with administration in case I missed it. Um, the current set of recommendations before us does not include the mandate to have uh, an external sock sign or sticker, correct? I like I didn't misread that, did I? The administration? Ms. Walker, if you could respond to the committee's request. Thank you, through chair to council. Council Magoon, you're asking the existing 1162? I, you know, sorry, Mr. Chair, may I respond? It must save time. No, uh, Ms. Walker, I apologize for my question. Uh, Councillor Taylor directed me to the uh, to the right letter. Um, if I may turn that into a motion, then, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, yeah, just sorry, just quickly for, for committee's uh, information, anybody who might be watching. Councillor Magoon was asking if the, uh, the uh, sign sticker requirement does approved accommodation was part of the bylaw. And it is, it's, it's uh, uh, 5.04.1U. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I apologize for missing that. Thank you, Councillor. Um, Jen, I'd, I'd like to make the following motion. That uh, committee amend short-term rentals bylaw number 1162. 
to strike section 4.1 from the draft. If I can speak to that. Oh, I'll wait. I just want to make sure that uh, administration is good with that wording before I speak to it. Are you saying all 4.1 or 4.1 U? No, uh, 4.1 section U. Yes, okay, yeah. I, I understand what you're saying. Okay, does that count so good? Yeah, absolutely, Mr. Okay. Chair. Can I speak to it? Yeah, yes, please. Uh, yeah, just with our public engagement session, um, there were a number of points of view brought up by our residents who came out um, with concerns for their own property uh, and security that I had not considered around the exterior uh, signage. Uh, it's certainly more than enough for me to think that they had valid concerns, and I, I'd like to see that drop from the draft bylaw. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Nagoon. Committee, we have a motion. And would like to speak to it, Can I just get some clarification? It was the same on my motion because on page 15 we have uh, section four, and under that we have 4.1. It talks to property manager, and on the next page, which is page 16, we have five, which are the conditions of the license. That should be 5.1. That no, is 4.1. That's correct. And it just it confused the hell out of me when I did mine, and it's the same here. Yes, I understand. Thank you for uh, pointing that out. It was an error on my part. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. As, as indicated, administration has noted that yeah. uh, there is a numbering error and that will be fixed when it comes back. So, yeah, uh, sorry, committee, we do have a motion before us. Councillor <laughs> Taylor. Councilman Gu and I do support you because I thought I did believe that there was merit to the theft argument that was provided. And I also think that the sticker requirement uh, could be a choice for the owner of the property, as it is with all home businesses, not something that's forced on people. Thank you, Councillor Taylor, Councillor Haas. Yeah, after the public hearing and hearing what they had to say and the fact that we are going to be moving towards them having a business license, if there is any complaints, you know, by residents, they can make those complaints to our, our services, file of services or whatever. It's going to be in the public record that it is a, uh, is a business and, and it can be dealt with accordingly. Um, and the fact that they also, you know, knowing that it's an Airbnb can also go then on online and, and post, you know, any complaints and anything like that as well. So that was helpful to hear from the public, uh, the public forum that we had and our public, yeah, in, for, the residents. Uh, so I'll be in favor of this. I think there's other avenues that can go out without the sticker. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Haas. Uh, for myself, I have no problem supporting this. So it's fine. Uh, I, I, what I would like to see though is this, uh, maybe some follow up on the suggestion that uh, maybe a, a window sticker can be provided when the business license is approved and then it's up to the the short-term rental provider, whether they want to display it or not. That's it's similar to uh, the Hinton District Chamber of Commerce does something similar to when you you uh, pay your, your annual uh, membership fees. When you when you get your business or your uh, recognition from the chamber, part of that is a window sticker that businesses can or or cannot if they choose to display that in the window. So I would support something similar to that, where there is something that's. Uh, that's supplied, that's up to the operator to display if they choose to. Committee, is there anything further? Okay, if we could see the motion, please. <laughs> Councilor Magoon has moved the committee amend short term rental bylaw number 1162 to strike section 4.1U from the draft. Any, all those in favor? Carried unanimously. Okay. We'll go to Mayor Michaels. I'm good now. Thank you, Mr. Mayor Chair. Michaels, okay. Any, is there anything further? Councilor the Bears. Uh, my comment sort of uh, flows into enforcement grade here inspections. Those number headings are all incorrect as well. So if we can make sure those are all right. Okay. 
Thank you, Councilor mm -hmm. Lewis. That's noted by administration. And they made a commitment to fix that when it comes back. Thank you. Committee, anything further? There's nothing further from committee. I believe there is still a motion required for this to come back to the regular. Maybe. Is there any additional action? Councilor Haas. Uh, I'll move that uh, committee agree to the recommended amendments and direct administration uh, to bring bylaw 1162 forward to the regular meeting of council on May 17th to receive second reading as amended and give given the third and final reading. Is that is May 17th correct? I see no Hamlet. Sir, if I could, just looking to Miss Walker. We uh, are looking to bring this back for second to reading on the bylaws for May 17th, not May 3rd. That is correct. And also to receive uh, third reading uh, that evening. However, given that we have these additional uh, changes, we may want to move out second and third reading to the next regular meeting after May 17th to June 7th in order to uh, amend the other documents which have to, to bring those amendments as well, which is the business license bylaw with the fees schedule, as well as the land use bylaw amendment, as well as the fees and charges, development fees and charges bylaw as well. So all those will have to get three readings that same that same night um, if this get if this bylaw gets passed, so that they're in effect when this bylaw is passed. Um, and I don't know that May 17th, if, if maybe we just want to say that we, we give second reading on May 17th and then we push third reading out and the rest of the bylaws until, uh, until June. It's just a suggestion in case we do hear, in case you want to look at getting some more public feedback now that we've established um, the fees, we may want to go back out to our stakeholders uh, that, you know, that participated it's it's up to council. Thank you. Uh, thank thank you, Ms. Walker, for that suggestion. It's council's prerogative when it comes back if they if it passes second. If somebody wants to move to move it to third, that's always council's prerogative. I was actually going to comment that the wording here seems a little bit odd that it's mm -hmm. saying second and third. That's a decision of council. Correct. So it should just be coming back for second reading. If council wants to move it to third that same evening, that's fine. In regards to the to the other stuff, to me, that actually can't even be considered until this passes third reading, because if it doesn't pass third reading, there's no need to amend the other bylaws. So uh, I think I have Councilor Taylor, Councilor Haas. No, nope. Councilor Haas. Mm. Yeah, I, I, that's why I kind of paused there for a moment reading it, but I, I prefer to remove that third reading and final reading part um, and just leave it as to receive second reading at the May 17th meeting. And I, if I may agree, you know, I wouldn't expect administration to go change any other bylaws until this one is actually passed, you know, and then, then we would then go down that road later as well. So thank you. So Jen, if we can see it. If I may, the, the intent was that we would we would pass this 1162 first and then have those bylaws ready. Um, and if if you didn't give third reading, then we would just not address those other bylaws that same evening, just so that we're not delayed after passing the bylaw. We won't we don't have any fees in place to charge. But the only other thing would be that we have this grace period for existing hosts and operators that were provided in six months grace period before they have to pay. So that would take care of, of that situation. So for me, just to thank you. Yeah. So to clarify, you wanted it back May 3rd, see you on Hamlet or May 17th now? No, it may 17th. So. No, okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Okay. Committee, is there any opposition to changing that? I, I don't change it without amendment or apparently amendment isn't. It's probably quite correct, but it's it it procedurally though it, it likely should be worded. So, is there any any opposition to uh, changing the wording to draw the third reading from the motion? Any none. Any comments, questions on the proposed motion? So yeah, I'll just speak one more time. Usually, Mr. Chair, I I try to find a reason to support motions. Uh, and directions, even if there's small things I, I may not like in them. Unfortunately for myself, uh, the fee structure is sort of a, a make or break for me, so I, I won't be supporting this moving forward. Okay. Thank you, Councilor Magoon. Uh, I'd speak to it. Uh, we're only sending it to regular for a second reading. There's still opportunity to engage with citizens, there's still opportunity to change the proposed bylaw. I have no problem sending it to regular uh, for further consideration. And I have no problem considering changes as we move forward too. So I don't want to see this, this bylaw die. So I'm going to support sending it back to regular. And if there's further changes, that's fine. Thank you. Any other comments? Councilor Taylor? I share your concern. Like I'm conflicted to whether to support it or not support it, but I think what will happen, I'm going to support it. We're going to get a bunch more feedback on this and that'll give us an opportunity to still fix it. But if the final version has this, I probably would move for it. So that's what I was thinking. Thank you, Councillor Taylor. Councillor McGoon. No, I think yeah, my fellow uh, colleagues are right. Yeah, you're right. It should go to a uh, regular council meeting for discussion and then we can we can discuss its merits there. Thanks. Thank you, Council Magoon. Committee, anything further? Okay, seeing nothing from committee, we can see it again. Councilor Haas has moved that committee agree to the recommended amendments and direct administration to bring bylaw number 1162 forward to the regular meeting of council on May 17th, 2022, to receive second reading. Committee, all those in favor? And that's carried unanimously. Committee, is there anything further on this matter? So nothing from committee that brings us to mobile vendors bylaw number 1170. Thank you, sir. I'm on page 18 of tonight's uh, community the whole agenda package, and uh, I believe that uh, there's Mindy, and uh, our uh, planning technologist will take us through this item and for uh, the consideration of the committee whole uh, mobile vendors bylaw has received all allow committee to cover the background. Thank you. Thank you, ICA O'Hanlon and through to committee. Good evening, everyone. Can everyone hear me or am I good for volume? I can hear you fine. Great. Uh, so this item is before you really as a basic introduction and to consider implementing uh, some improved mechanisms for managing mobile vendors. Uh, so in years past, uh, just as a bit of background, mobile vendors have been managed by us on a case-by-case -case basis when they are operated on public lands. Uh, you know, if you've seen them in events and on private lands, those are handled a little bit differently and, and and although they're included in the bylaw here, they're not uh, what would be considered under the uh, permit on this. And I'll explain a little bit more about that later, but just kind of keep that in mind. So although managing on a case-by-case -case basis works in the short term, um, as we get more and more mobile vendors over time or a staff turnover occurs, uh, sometimes we see a level of service gaps, um, things like consistency because of staff turnover or things like because we need to talk to different uh, service areas in our departments, uh, it takes us a little bit longer to react to businesses on what they can and cannot do. Um, in recent years, we've seen, you know, a few more of these vendors coming and staying in our town. So, you know, because of that, it's recommended that Hinton looks at implementing a mechanism to assist in the management of these types of businesses. So in order to create that mechanism, of course, the administration started with a review on several different communities uh, to manage them and how they do that. During that review, it came 
became pretty apparent that there's not really a clear and consistent way that most municipalities do that. There's a variety of methods and a variety of fees. Uh, however, there are some common requirements, uh, such as like a business license, liability insurance, safety measures, operating rules, among those municipalities that have a pretty clear mechanism for what they do. Um, so we took that information, uh, used it as a framework and discussed that with several stakeholders in Hinton um, to create kind of a draft content, including regulations, locations, and fees. Uh, feedback from that uh, received from the initial stakeholder engagement uh, has been incorporated into the proposed bylaw and the draft uh, mobile vendor guidelines and locations, we're calling it. Uh, some examples of the feedback included our, uh, like the addition of the museum location, some adjustments in some of the locations, uh, and clarifying some of the inspection requirements and adding uh, what we're calling the mobile cart vendors. So that's more of the small vendors, if you picture like a push cart with ice cream in it. So the intention behind the proposed bylaw and the mobile vending permit is to improve our management process for mobile vendors, specifically really in four areas. So number one, to communicate the town's overall support uh, for these types of businesses now and also into the future. And to assist new and existing vendors so that they have clear answers to the questions about what, when, where, and how. To ensure that mobile vendors are operating safely and to mitigate the risk to the community at large of private businesses operating on public land. And that's the short version. So thank you and I'll welcome any questions that you might have. Yes, Dr. Uh, Katie, questions, Councillor Taylor. Is there a 20 meter requirement from a business that sells a similar product being run by uh, businesses that sell a similar product? So if I owned a restaurant and I was having a fish and chip special that day and then the food truck set up 20 meters away and it was having and it only sells fish and chips or something like that. Um, the, the restaurant business is being consulted with respect to that requirement. Administration. Uh, sir, I, I will ask Ms. Petka if that's been discussed. The, the question of the committee has been Regarding the separation distance from a same or similar business, has have we gone out to business to discuss the 20 meters, or are we pulling that from samples in other communities? Thank you, ICO Hanlon, through to committee. Really, that came from other communities. Um, we have not gone out to the businesses at large. We were hoping that feedback would come from the public hearing process. Um, just doing a few quick measurements on some of the locations, uh, just from a rule of thumb, they are kind of 20 meters would be outside of the area, <laughs> how to explain this. So if you were to measure from any of the existing restaurants, let's just say in the green square as an example, and where the food trucks have been parking, 20 meters is farther than where they have been parking. So like nobody will be parking right in front of a current restaurant, if that makes sense. I hope I answered your question with that. Councilor Taylor, follow up. Well, that is true. The current regulation does so say 20 meters. The, the green areas that were provided are uh, more uh, guidelines for management. So in the future is possible. Is that a question or just kind of just a question? Commenting? If I could, to, if I could serve through to you, through you to the members of the committee. Um, when you take a look, and I, I'm going to bring council's or committee's direction to uh, pages 42 and forward in your agenda package. So pages 42 to 48. The intent of these areas are identifying where within the town of Hinton we will allow this as a possibility. And again, it's not limited to only mobile food vendors, it's mobile vendors in general. So um, we then need the subsequent, whether it's 200 meters or 100 meters, and, and that becomes an enforcement issue potentially for the town of Hinton, but hopefully this is gonna be self-regulating 
amongst the mobile vendors themselves that they're not going to set up within that 20 meter and create an issue. Um, is that <clears throat> fair, Mindy? Okay. Councillor Kavich? Yep. Yeah, I'm sorry, not to, but on page 39 actually states the places in which they can set up so you don't see it, but none of those are anywhere near any restaurants. Uh, that would that cause an issue of that at this point because that's the only places they can set up. So their guidelines. So there seems okay. to be some confusion whether the green yeah. zones are guidelines or if that's going to be the mandated areas where mobile food vendors or mobile vendors are going to be allowed to set up. Can the administration speak to that, please. And these ready. Thank you, Chair, through committee. Yeah, so on page 39 there, exactly, those seven locations are the permitted locations that we've established. So those have been discussed with uh, the, the known mobile vendors so far, um, and they're outlined on the maps on page, sorry, I'll just find the page here, 41, I believe, uh, and farther on, and you'll see them kind of outlined in green. Uh, those locations are the locations that they operate in now or that they see themselves operating going forward. Uh, those seem to be the best visible locations, spaces that would work for their business, uh, and also, as was mentioned before, seem to be the least conflict locations as well. Um, those, that being said, you know, going forward, things change with businesses, uh, with life in general. So we've tried to have, have some provision in there that, you know, if things do change, there can be some flexibility. But, you know, in the bylaw, uh, let's look at it at that time. Come with us to a proposal. Where is a new location? And let's look at it then. But for right now, these are the locations. You can go there without needing something additional to your permit. Other comments, questions, direction, Councillor Taylor. Um, what happens to the uh, appeal fee if the uh, appellant is successful? The refunded administration. Thank you, sir. Through you to uh, the members of the committee. Mindy, the question is, can, in, in the event of an appeal, so the appeal that comes to the CAO, if the appeal is successful, do they get the fee back or is the fee covering the administrative cost of the appeal? Thank you, ICO Hanlon, through the chair to Councillor Taylor. The intent, and I mean, that can always be changed, was that the appeal fee was meant to cover administrative costs of handling the appeal process. Well, in other words, it's not refundable then. It's, it's currently proposed or is not being refundable. Okay. I guess my question to council would be, is, does that seem fair? So you, you somebody uh, says you did something wrong, you pay your $250, you appeal it, say the bylaw officer says you did something wrong, you appeal it. And then at the end of the appeal, you find out you did nothing wrong and that you were, you were okay, yet you're owed $250. Does that strike anybody as fair? So we're good. Just in response to that, no. Okay. So, so Taylor? Can I make a motion? If you'd like to, yep. Yeah. I add a move that we add a, a section uh, 8.62 bylaw 7. Looking forward to wording, but the wording would be that appeal feel the P, the P, appeal fees would be returned to successful accounts. Appeal fees would be returned to successful appellants. Now for add sections, sorry. Oh, eight six. Thank you. 
Maybe we have a proposed motion. Comments, questions? No, I, I, I won't be supporting this. Uh, as Ms. Petko has indicated, that it, it's a fee to cover the administrative cost of administering the appeal. Uh, in addition to that, I think the other benefit of having a fee for appeal is that it limits the number of frivolous appeals that are going to be coming back. So if there's a, a risk that you're going to pay your appeal fee, and you are making a frivolous appeal and you know it, that might convince you not to make the appeal knowing you're not going to get your fee back. So I won't be supporting a return of appeal fee. That's okay, right? May I, I was only proposing the return of the appeal field if you were successful. The frivolous appeal fee, you pay the appeal, it's frivolous, you lose, you lose your money. Appreciate that clarification. No, Make sure that counts in favor. One of the challenges of doing these meetings through Zoom now, we don't have the motion on a screen in front of us all the time, so we can keep referring to it. So thank you for that. I appreciate it. Committee, anything further? Okay. Councillor Taylor's moved that administration add section 8.6 appeal fees would be returned to successful appellants. Committee, all those in favor? Opposed? Sorry, we'll, we'll call a revote. Uh, yeah. All those in favor? And that's carried unanimously. Thank you. Councillor Magoon. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I have a question on page 39 of 62 uh, regarding the other related town fees. Um, so when I look here, um, you know, most of them are clear. I'm assuming, you know, uh, a mobile vendor has to get a development permit because they're doing part of their work at home. And then I see development permit for a commercial location. But then, and again, forgive me if I'm, I'm misunderstanding that. I should probably start with a confirmation there. Uh, I'm assuming that prior to considering an annual fee for mobile vendors, mobile vendors had to pay both a home occupation fee, which was $75, and a commercial location fee for $100. That's, is that correct? Administration? Sir, uh, I'm going to defer to Ms. Petkoff. Thank you, Chair, through to Councillor Magoon. So the reason this is in there is to answer your question. So I guess two questions. Uh, before this, I mean, they were, like I said, kind of on an ad hoc basis and it would depend. So I'm just going to kind of leave it there before complicating it. The reason it is two fees here is it depends on where they're parking their vehicle. And this is really what it's for. So if you're operating a home occupation and you have space on your site to park your food truck or your cart or store, let's just say you're more of like a table operation and you sell fruit stand, that type of thing. Uh, if you're storing your stuff at home in your garage or what have you, that would be a home occupation, right? If, but if, say, for example, your, your food truck or what have you is maybe in a bay in a commercial location, that would be the difference. So it's more about your, your base of operations. Perfect. Uh, that takes care of my concern, Mr. Chair. Thank you. So I, I'm going to ask a follow-up then. So for an out-of-town vendor, for instance... They obviously wouldn't need the, uh, the development permit for home occupation as their base of business is in Edson or Stone Plain or wherever. They're just setting up their vendor booth here for the week. Correct. Right. Okay, thank you. Committee, anything further? Other questions, comments? Okay. Councilor Magoon. Uh, yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. I, uh, I'd like to move that committee direct administration to bring mobile vendors bylaw number 1170 for first reading to the regular council meeting on May 17th, 2022, uh, as amended. Thank you, Councillor Magoon. Would you like to speak to it? Yeah, just briefly, uh, Mr. Chair, this is, there's a lot in here and I, you know what, um, mobile vendors for us, I think are, you know, in the scheme of things relatively new. I, I very much look forward to the, the public hearing side of this and the public engagement side of this. 
because there certainly are things I haven't considered. Uh, I'm sure on all sides of it. So I'm, I will get a lot of my feedback through that process. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Magoon. Councillor Magoon, did you want to include the second part too? Would you prefer that? Oh, no, you know what? Yeah, we certainly could. I, there's probably no reason why we couldn't. Uh, and that committee direct administration to schedule a public hearing at the regular council meeting on June 21st, 2022, in the council chambers to hear public comments on mobile vendors by law number 1170. Thank you, Councillor Magoon. Committee, we have a motion. Any comments or questions regarding the motion? <coughs> uh, Council Magoon has moved the committee direct administration to bring mobile vendors by law number 1170 for first reading to the regular committee, sorry, regular <coughs> council meeting on May 17th, 2022, as amended, and the committee direct administration to schedule a public hearing at a regular council meeting on June 21st, 2022, in the council chambers to hear public comments on mobile vendors to bylaw number 1170. Committee, all those in favor? And that's carried unanimously. Is there anything further on this? Nothing that brings us to the discussion items, which we have none. Council, sorry, reporting, council reports. I will start going over to my left with Councillor Magoon. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Nothing to report. Councillor Magoon, Councillor Harris. Uh, just want to, first of all, thank uh, administration uh, for our strategic planning that happened this past weekend. I, I really did enjoy that process and I'm looking forward to, uh, you know, uh, seeing the outcome of that and giving the report back. So it was really great. Thank you. Um, other than that, I, I attended, uh, we had a youth council committee meeting uh, on last Thursday. Um, what a great group of people. Uh, we took some pictures. We got some pictures. We all wearing our hoodies and we had a fantastic debate over um, our project for the summer. Um, and we've landed on, we're going to partner, work with the museum and we're going to be working on their public garden. Uh, and we're going to be um, you know, planting and, and, and promoting that and getting uh, other kids out there as well. So um, the premise is we're looking at ways in which to improve our mental health in our youth, in our communities, and ways in which knowing about that. A few projects were brought forward, um, and, and this was the one that uh, our, our council, youth council, decided on. But the, the back and forth debate that they had, it sounded almost like we were up there. Uh, it was really good. Uh, they, they're quite an impressive group. So next meeting, we'll be making the plans and really getting started at, at, uh, at that project. So that's all I've brought. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Haas, Councillor Taylor. Going to the uh, Tom Peterson uh, renaming of the room at the uh, library. It was uh, very well attended and uh, uh, good, uh, good turnout of a cross section of friends from Tom and the family. I think I really appreciated the effort that was put in by the library staff. So good job there. And I was in a uh, was at the Chamber of Commerce in a sort of ancillary uh, function for the whole night. And I think that the function went uh, smoothly, perfectly. It was extremely well organized. And uh, I think it does credit to the Chamber of Commerce and the businesses. And it was quite celebratory in our hometown staff, Connor, won an award. And I've actually seen him in the swimming pool with uh, the person that they're talking about. And he is really, he is really good at that guy. Thank you, Councillor Taylor. Mayor Michaels. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. That was the only thing I was going to comment. A uh, big thank you to uh, the Chamber and Connor Shaw. If anyone sees him, thank him. Uh, it brought a lot of tears to people's eyes. Uh, hearing what he does was uh, tremendous. So thank you, Administration. Please uh, trickle down uh, those thanks. And yeah, a great evening of fun and the service from Rotary. Uh, thank you, Councilor Taylor. And, With and a smile. Yeah, and others, uh, most of the time a smile. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it was uh, a great evening. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Mayor Michaels, Councilor Laguerre. Same, the only comment I'll make is on to the gala. I just, uh, third time's charm, right? 
And um, it's just nice to get together and, and particularly after these really tough times, celebrate a, a job well done. And, and I know others don't, but Natalie lost her assistant the week before the gala too. So she actually did all of that on her own. So uh, I was there late at night. She was doing seating charts and I showed up with booze the next morning. She was still doing seating charts. So thank you. Councillor O'Bear, Councillor Reese. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm sorry I'm turning my back to you all the time. So um, I too uh, attended the um, Hinton Youth Advisory Committee. I am so proud of those kids. The way they conduct their council meetings is unreal. And the nice thing is our mayor, Mayor Michaels, he came and talked to a few of the kids last Thursday. So it was great. Very proud of them. Uh, I also attended the strategic planning this past Friday and Saturday, and I'm really looking forward to when that comes back to us. There's got to be something in the air because our citizens really want to talk right now. So I've been out and about speaking to a lot of our citizens, have different concerns, um, and, and it's nice that they're calling upon us. I was able to volunteer for the gala, and I enjoyed that so much, so much. Love the mask that our mayor sported that night. Um, also, I was able to talk to our um, MLA and our MP, which was awesome. And another thing is, I don't know when I got so old. Everybody there was so young. You know, um, great night. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Councillor Reese. And for myself, I have nothing to add that hasn't been covered by the uh, other members. So. We'll move on to Chief Administrative Officer reporting. CEO Hamlin. Thank you, sir. Um, not too much to add, but again, that hasn't been already covered. I really did enjoy the gala. It was a wonderful event. Very, very well um, pulled off, prepared. I was curious, I don't know if Rotary announced the, the success of the Ukrainian fundraiser. Was there an amount or Fourteen hundred dollars or fifteen hundred somewhere. Oh, right on. That's great. Um, on a personal matter, I, I would like to thank Council uh, for the accommodation of my schedule for the last several weeks, perhaps almost a month, and uh, have uh, managed a, a personal matter at home and uh, said goodbye to my dad on Sunday and uh, took care of the lawyers this morning. And uh, so we'll be back in in, in town. Of, Working a regular schedule now going forward. And I do appreciate the mayor and council's accommodation for some remote work during that period of time. And thank you very much. Thank you. I see you uh, so We do need to cover council action and the rest of council actions completeness as well. And that's Page 51 of our report. Yes. So, uh, page one of the four pages on the <coughs> council action, council pending action pending list. Uh, so, we, we do have, and, uh, and so of course, we were not the Gerard Redmond School. We discussed that earlier today. The uh, report will be coming back to uh, council here in May. Um, again, I'm still wrapping my head around how we do you want to go line by line. We don't. No, I, I, I would. It's up to committee. I would prefer we not go line by line. If, if there's anything that you wanted to highlight, I see the old handling, that's fine. Or if there's any comments or questions about any of the specific items from the committee. Well, it's so much, if I could, sir, on the first page we've discussed here tonight, yep. and even that's moved beyond that. So I'm just going to jump to page two. Um, there will be some uh, discussion here coming. Uh, so uh, on May 3rd, on the Wild Mountain Music Festival funding request, that is uh, on the agenda, has been discussed with agenda prep. Um, Uh, sir, that's the middle of page 204. That's MD 2529. Yeah, we'll go to Councillor Race. Thank you, Mr. Chair. 
MD2535. It says um, additional comments returning to council April 26. I'm sorry, Louise. If you don't mind what page is that on? Because That's they're not in on order anymore. They're hard to find. 51 of 62. 2535, the bottom one. one. Okay. You go page one, two, three, four. That's right. It's page one of four. Bottom one on page four. Sorry, what was your question again, Councilor? Um, it says under um, additional comments that it's coming back to us April 26th today. Oh, sorry. So that's under, that has not been updated. And uh, unfortunately, the uh, the director that's been working on that one's been off a bit ill, and it'll be coming to a, an early meeting in May, and I believe May 3rd, but we'll confirm it agenda prep uh, on Thursday. Thank you. Uh, page two of four. Uh, I think we're pretty familiar with all of these. If there's nothing on that, I'll do to three or four. But... Page three of four, uh, ongoing with uh, Colliers on the project lead up at the top of the page. This is on the Bhutan land development. Um, so uh, hopefully Mac is going to have on the ATE an updated report, and that should be coming back. And I see the revision dates of June 28th. I'm going to touch base with my staff. <clears throat> confirm. I, I thought we were hoping to have that back sooner than that, so I'll confirm that number and bring that back to council. Uh, the rest of these are, are pending, and, and I believe to the bottom of page three or four on the uh, council action pending list, I think all of those expected uh, dates remain accurate and don't really have anything to add on this at this time. On page four of four, the final page of the council <laughs> council action pending list. Uh, going through those number of these on this page are on hold, and, and to the best of my knowledge, on all of these remain on hold. Um, some of this is at the direction of council. Some of this is due to uh, staffing issues, and we're just short that one uh, that uh, corporate services director, which we uh, will be hoping to fill here in Q2, I believe. A question from Councillor Taylor. Yes. The item at the top of page four and the item at the bottom of page three, they look like they were repeat. So we could possibly get rid of one of them. Which ones are those? <coughs> <coughs> the item at the bottom of page three, which is called MD2479, plus I'm reading it on, has the same wording as the item at the top of page four, which is MD2480. So we'll investigate that. It appears to be identical and uh, the dates are consistent, so uh, I, I will discuss that. And uh, I believe one of those can be deleted, but I'll confirm that and we will update this for future meeting. Thank you. That's the council action pending list. And uh, moving on to page 55 of your agenda package. Uh, two page, or no, more than two pages, excuse me. I just cut off a bit, my apologies. So uh, this is pages 55 through 62 is the council action list. I am just taking a look here. So most of what we see here, of course, are these completed. So, um, I'm not sure if there's any questions on those pages, but if there is, I'd be happy to answer those and or uh, investigate those and bring back some additional information. 
Everything's been completed. Yes. So are there any, are there any comments or questions regarding action pending or action complete? I did have one question. I actually didn't see it on action pending. I may have missed it. But I believe the non-residential tax incentive bylaw was supposed to come back at some point in April for additional discussion and some uh, minor rejigging potentially. Yes. Uh, I don't know if that'll be coming forward soon. In May. And we'll confirm. I, I just we did discuss it at the last agenda prep meeting, and it is one of the meetings in May. It just got deferred with uh, with finance, so I, I think it's the last meeting in May. I don't know if you've got it handy, Jen, but otherwise we'll uh, we'll discuss it uh, at agenda prep. Okay. Good. Starting on the tenth. On the tenth. Thank you. Maybe anything further. There's nothing further. Sorry, my apologies. Nothing further in council action pending or council action complete. There are a few closed session items this evening. Yeah, Michael. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'll move to go into closed session. Okay. Uh, Mayor Michaels moved to go into closed session. Uh, move into closed session with a five minute break. All those in favor? <coughs> okay, committee, we're back into open session. Committee, and anything, motions? Councillor Gobert. I'd like to make a motion, please, that committee direct administration to bring the land discussion report option one to the regular meeting closed session on May 17th, 2022. For decision. Thank you, Councillor Barish. Committee, are there any comments or questions regarding the motion? Seeing nothing from committee, all those in favor? That was carried unanimously. Thank you. Committee. Councillor Haas. We move to move back into closed session. Councillor Haas. Motion to move into closed session. All those in favor? Unanimously. Now back in closed session.